replace blood with blood. It's a simple mantra, but one that I see violated all the time. I see folks with trauma patients who are tachycardic, have a positive shock index, or are frankly shocky, and they are reaching for a crystalloid bolus before calling for blood. The patient didn't bleed salt water, so don't give them salt water back. And it's important for us to consider the downsides of that crystalloid bolus. When you give crystalloid to patients with blood loss, you're diluting whatever hemoglobin you have, you're diluting clotting factors, and you can worsen outcomes. This is all well and good if you have blood readily available, but what should you do if you don't have blood on hand? In that situation, we should focus on three different things. Number one is to get the patient to a location where there's blood available and definitive hemorrhage control can be achieved. If you're in the pre-hospital setting, that means getting them to the hospital fast. And if you're at an outlying hospital, that means transferring to your trauma center where that trauma team is available. Number two is to control bleeding with simple maneuvers. Apply tourniquets, apply direct pressure, and consider application of a pelvic binder. And finally, number three is to tolerate a lower blood pressure than you normally would and consider using vasopressors instead of crystalloid. Clearly, vasopressors are not the ideal answer, but they can provide your patient with a little extra blood pressure and a little extra perfusion while avoiding the dilutional effects that crystalloid can have on clotting factors and hemoglobin.